I'd like to take a moment to tell you about Entertainment Earth. They carry tens of thousands of licensed products covering everything from Power Rangers to Pokemon, Ultraman to Iron Man, and for RangerCast listeners, you can get 10% off your order and free shipping on any order, $79 and up. Just go to ee.toys slash ranger. That's ee.toys slash ranger. Or click the link in our show notes. RangerCast may receive a commission from your purchase. 180, 180, 180, 180, 180, 180, 180, 180, 180, 180, 180, 180, 180, 180, This is RangerCast, episode 31, Everything Must Go, Hasbro's $3 million auction, recorded on Tuesday, November 19th, 2024. In this episode, Rita's Rewind's Plan of Attack, a tabletop game winds down, and the new era of Power Rangers comics. Alright, this is RangerCast. As always, I am Tyler, better known as Rito Volto, and I have Josh with me, also known as Razgriz. Moving on, we do have some other news to get to. First off, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Rita's Rewind uh, is out. Well, not out yet, but the previews of it are out in uh, the press. Uh, outlets like IGN um, got to play through some of it. It harkens back not just to, you know, those old 2D beat-em-ups, like the kind that used to be made for Power Rangers, like, uh, you know, the movie game for Genesis and, and SNES, all of that, uh, but also like Ninja Turtles and The Simpsons. But it also draws a bit from the Sega Arcade games of that era, specifically Space Harrier and OutRun, and how it... Um, works in chase sequences and zord sequences to build up the build excuse me break up the uh uh break up the action a bit in my opinion it's a true genuine love letter to the fandom and the franchise as a whole it's what what we all wanted when we were little kids at this point and i mean uh not, not to jump ahead rito but i do have to give them kudos like what they've had so far like i am genuinely looking forward to it Right, and it's also clear that the developers at Digital Clips did their homework. For example, there is a boss fight against Chunky Chicken, and in the second phase, Turkey Jerk comes out and joins the fight, which seems random until you think about the -the behind-the-scenes history of what Turkey Jerk was, which was a kit bash of Chunky Chicken, which is a nice little in-joke for the fans. Absolutely. Um, you could definitely tell it it's giving me the the same vibes as uh original like MCU. Like you see fans really, really dedicated and you seeing the passion and the, the work involved in the uh, uh development of this uh uh video game. And I mean mm-hmm. I think it's a, a 
as a side note, I think it's just a breath of fresh air that we're getting a solid game that we don't have to worry about DLC with. We don't have to worry about like content updates. We're getting the full package for it. And it, I mean, it looks like there will what, be I'm DLC. Assuming, potentially, potentially. Yeah. Um, I, I, I expect DLC as well, but it's still nice to see something that is a complete package, you know, and looks to be what, maybe five to seven hours, maybe if that. Right. Um, for right. it. Um, but readers rewind kind of like Moby and Mighty Forces broke up to episodes and also to play because the whole thing is about Robo Rita going back in time, um, kind of, you know, an alternate ending once and always. Uh, it, it also plays the timeline. For example, you know, the game is set the like during season one, but Tangas show up, that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is really cool. Um, I think that's cool too. I mean, yeah. the stuff they've shown, they've already confirmed as well. You know, the speculation is uh, Tommy going to be in it after the initial trailer. Yes, he's in it. They had like a full 15 minute essentially playthrough, which I agree with you, Rito, that they're probably going to have DLC because it's probably going to be, have to, you have to have the White Ranger in there at that point. Right. But you know, that might also mean building out additional levels. You know, for yeah. example, how. Uh, the movie game for Genesis was padded out with levels depicting the events of, like, White Light and a few other episodes. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, that uh, game did slap. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm looking forward to this game. Um, I'm looking forward to... It makes sense as well, like, why it exists and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. with all the, the multiverse stuff, with all the alternate universes and stuff, it definitely makes sense of a, oh, what if she did win, and how did it impact it? Almost giving, like, another kind of soft reset of the series. Um, yeah. I'm just honestly... I, I have friends who... Uh, uh, I sent it to them. They're like, you know what? This would be fun as a party game, like, this Christmas, um, all of us to get together. It gives us a good reason to hang out and have, like, a full... Uh, Power Ranger uh, party, essentially, at this point. Um, and it arrives uh, a Rito December 10th, and I'm very That's happy right. to say as well that uh, it has cross-play compatibility with PC, PS5, Xbox. Uh, it will be on everything. Great. It'll be on your microwave. Yeah, yeah. It'll be... And, it, yeah. I'm looking forward to uh, uh, the old-school days, uh, Rito, of playing Power Rangers on the microwave with my bowl of cereal. No, no. Mm -hmm. um, but but that aside, I'm happy that they took their sweet time with it. They really made sure, at least at the surface from what we've got, um, it's going to look like to be a fun game and that all Power Ranger fans will enjoy. I'm also very happy, too, they finally announced it because it really did feel like, it's coming, guys. We promise. I mean, I don't think I, I don't think I ever felt like it wasn't to... coming. I never felt like uh, it wasn't coming. Games take time. I felt like it was going to get delayed because they kept kind of kicking the can down the street. And no, when I think there was enough. Them, there was like there was enough like footage of the game in action that I I wasn't anxious at all. I was also excited to see that they announced the voice cast. Um, AJ Locasio will be voicing, or I guess did voice, uh, Jason Zordon Alpha 5. He's been a bunch of things. He was recently Gambit in X-Men 97. Uh, he also is a great impressionist. He did a great um, uh, Marty McFly in the Back to the Future Telltale games. That was like his breakout role. He was really good in it. As Kimberly is Christina V. Valenzuela, uh, she's trying to transition her. Uh, she's trying to transition her stage name back to you know her birth name, but uh, she was in Hyperforce. Uh, she was Vesper in Hyperforce, and she was the new Sailor Mars in uh, uh, Sailor Moon. <laughs> right, but where would Power Rangers fans know her from? Right, 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 right. Oh, what, what I mean, what uh, well, I guess the the joke then for Power Rangers was they picked the voice actors that you will never get an autograph from, just like real life. <laughs> So the same tradition of the Pink Ranger. <laughs> and the uh, Black Ranger is voiced by Isaac Robinson Smith. Uh, also from X-Men 97, Holly Cho is the voice of the Yellow Ranger. The Green Ranger will be voiced by James Willems. He also voices Bones, Goldar, and a fourth character who I guess we'll find out in Rita's Rewind. Ali Dixon voices Robo Rita. 
and the Blue Ranger is voiced by Dan Amrick, who literally works at Digital Clips and used to be an actor. So that's pretty cool. You know, good for him. Yeah, it's a very, very solid list. I'm very impressed with uh, uh, the voice actors and actresses they got for it. And it's a little bit, of, even a little bit of a surprise of who they got. So uh, look, I would say based on the previews and stuff, too, they don't feel forced either. Um, right. They do feel like the original voices. Yeah, and um, I think people who were expecting them to get some of the original actors. First, this game takes place in 1993. The original surviving actors. Uh, first, this game takes place in 1993. Let me re- let me reset that sentence entirely. Uh, for people who were expecting them to get the original surviving actors, uh, there are a few things to consider. First, this game takes place in 1993, uh, and these actors are much older now. Uh, second of all, this is not a union game. In fact, uh, there's a sag after strike against interactive projects. Uh, so... That means that even if they wanted to get Barbara Goodson, they wouldn't be able to get her. That said, you know, we hope SAG AFTRA gets everything that they want, and we hope that AI never replaces, you know, real human voice actors in motion capture. Uh, you know, rock on. I think that's, and, and to add to that too. Yeah. Um, just very briefly, I'm also glad to like what what you mentioned too about the like you know the actor is a little bit older. I mean, you could say that about X Men '97, where some of the stuff it's a little bit rough for them to get back into character um, for that, and sometimes the voices change where they just don't sound like the characters. So finding someone that is similar is not bad. That it's a great right, thing yeah. that they are not basically stuck in a corner. Right, yeah, um, yeah. I think X Men ninety seven. Like some of them came back to do the same voices. Some of them came back to do different voices. I think Alice in Court though abandoned Jubilee for a totally different reason. Um, well, a great example yeah. of that, uh, uh, Rito, is the original voice actress for uh, Jean Grey in uh, ninety seven. She right. outright said her voice has changed over thirty years. She can't, she can't get the same pitch anymore that Jennifer Hale can, but they still want to bring her back. So she was the the scientist um, for right. that. Versus I still saying, need to watch X Men ninety seven. So yeah, yeah. There's I'm way behind it, everything. I'm not doing any spoilers for it. It's just a the reality when they were like they were able to find a role for her, and they were glad they were able to do that. Uh, versus Cal Dodd, who was original Wolverine and sounds exactly like he did thirty years ago, and it actually sounds just as uh. Uh, good because the voice is a lot rougher it's like yeah that's wolverine (laughs) yeah the other bit of news is that the uh media blasters common rider collection uh with common rider zeo common rider j shin common rider prologue and common rider world is out and on its way to people rather it was uh there was an audio sync issue with shin common rider prologue media blasters is addressing john c rebella who basically is media blasters He's the CEO, all that, said in a video that they stopped shipping, that Lip Flap was about five or six frames off, but people were seeing it like a second off. Uh, quality control didn't flag it because Shin Kamen Rider Prologue is an older film, and films of the time were all done with ADR, and it's totally normal for Lip Flaps to be a little bit off because, uh, you know, just the human element. So th- they got... HD versions of J and ZO from Toy, but they got SD material from Toy on Shin, which if you're trying to put that on Blu-ray, that's not going to work. It's not going to work very well. So Media Blasters wasn't happy with that. So they found a guy with a copy of the Japanese Blu-ray who ripped it and sent that file to them and didn't do any work on it. Uh, but whatever that person did to rip it ended up with the audio sync issue. So they got a better rip of the Japanese Blu-ray, and it basically comes down to six frames, but this is a big release for them, obviously, and they don't want people to feel ripped off, so they're going frame by frame, and everybody who has already received it 
will be sent fixed discs in the mail. I'm taking people's word for it that the issue even exists. I haven't watched, uh, I haven't popped my Blu-ray in yet, but um, it's good that they're trying to do the right thing because there's a release that you don't want to get wrong uh, as hyped as it was. Absolutely. So, uh, in other Tokusatsu news, a new trademark has been filed for the next entry in the Ultraman franchise. It is for Ultraman Omega, which comes out in 2025. Also, Ultraman Z is uh, coming to Blu-ray. Um, let me let me restart that sentence. Ultraman Z is coming to Blu-ray on January 28th from Mill Creek Entertainment. Uh, for those who haven't seen it, here is the uh, synopsis. In the distance past them. In the distant past, a monstrous devil was shattered after a devastating battle. Today, the splinters of that powerful foe are still causing chaos throughout the universe. While the ultra heroes fight to restore peace to the galaxy, a mysterious new threat used these splinters in its despicable schemes to destroy planets one by one. And now that evil being is approaching the land of light. In its way stands the gallant Ultraman Zero and its disciple, Ultraman Zet. At the end of a fierce battle, Z pursues the monster alone, making his way towards Earth. Meanwhile, on Earth, the anti-monster robot force of storage has been formed to deal with regular monster threats and has just been joined by its newest recruit, hot-blooded youth Haruki Natsukawa. When a monster from space invades Earth, Z and Haruki have a failed fate. When a monster from space invades Earth, Z and Haruki have a fateful encounter. Here begins the incredible story of our two young heroes' battles. Uh, and this is actually a new-ish series it came out just in 2020 uh the dub was announced in 2023 it premiered on the uh youtube channel that april so that's about a year and a half between premiere and blu-ray that's pretty cool um and way i'm not i need to get more into ultraman maybe i'll pick this up i don't know Man, I haven't watched Ultraman in years. I'm kind of in the same boat. I'm more excited about uh, the new uh, Gridman uh, uh, series. So, yeah, we're, we're in the same boat. Uh, and the other thing out of the trademark filings is the name of the new Sentai series. And I guess they're just taking using the first name they come up with in a room at Toei. Uh, the name is Wanban Sentai Gojuja. That's Number one, Sentai, Go Juja. Here's something you do feel qualified to talk about. Heroes of the Grid is kind of in the process of winding down. <laughs> I, I have mixed emotions on this because, you know, after a five-year uh, run, which is a very impressive for a board game for Power Rangers of all things, because regardless of how much we love the series, it is still a smaller like fandom versus compared to others. So to get a board game from its initial Kickstarter run in 2019 to have this big grand finale in 2025 with at least one Ranger member or like significant figure from uh a, from each series is it's as impressive as the Lightning Collection with how diverse and everything is. But it's it's what you said, uh, Rito, as all good things must come to an end. So at some point, the costs are going to catch up uh, uh, to them. So they're going to go at, all out on this last set. Supposedly, it looks like on the Kickstarter, um, you can go there now to get notified when it gets launched, which should be looking like... They said early 2025. So I'm assuming if we go by the Digital Eclipse uh, calendar... Anywhere from, I would say, late March, maybe all the way to May. That's just a guess. But um, like I said, I'm sad to see it uh, come to an end because it is genuinely a fun board game. Um, but my wallet will be very happy to hear that, though. Um, they made the announcement a couple weeks back and during their like Renegade Con online show. And they already gave us some um, uh, ones that are going to be... Uh, uh, released at the time so we are getting for all of those people clamoring um for lord zed no you're not getting the original kickstarter lord zed but you are getting it appears master zed uh, from cosmic fury where also looks like we're getting evil ollie as an enemy based on the sculpts they sent um looking at it right here uh 
Death Ranger uh, from the comics. Um, also getting Evo Form 3, uh, Lord Draken. And then they show off, it looks like some artwork of Master Zed um, and Evil Ollie and a couple others. Um, obviously, I think it's all by the same artist from before. I think it's still Dan. But there's also, too, looking at the character cards of, like, drafts and everything, it does look like we're also getting Mystic uh, Force as one of the last teams. Um, Ninja Adam. And then also, uh, it looks like... Uh, I can't really tell from, but it looks like um, something from Cosmic Fury as well. So we're getting some good stuff, and they said it's going to be a big box. So I'm looking forward to – oh, yeah. We're also – it looks like potentially, depending on it, it we did get artwork of um, Mountain Blaster. So maybe there's some turbo we're finally getting. It may be, you know, better late than never, but we're getting something from it. Um, but, I mean, as a playtester for it, I've enjoyed playtesting for this game. It was fun uh, to uh, playtesting like the original prototypes of Rangers, different scenarios and everything like that. I fully expect it to be very expensive. I don't have any insider info on that. Um, that's all pertains to the company and everything, of course. But yeah, I mean, they've made a run at it. Um, we'll be looking forward to it when it releases. And, you know, it's popular at cons. Um, we just had it happen at... Uh, our little local con here where someone demoed it for the day and you could bring your own ranger so i brought a uh, a uh, crone with me and ran uh lost galaxy pink so i'm looking forward to it we'll we'll know more details obviously uh as we get closer to uh its release date probably they'll probably have maybe one more renegade con before they officially announce the date or anything so everyone just make sure your credit cards are cleared make sure uh, uh you're ready for a kickstarter um for it um yeah I'm looking forward and, to it. But, and there was a new RPG source book released today, wasn't there? Yes, there was. So a couple uh, during that same Renegade Con, um, they announced that Power Rangers, uh, uh, their RPG through Renegade system, uh, is going to get another source book that is focused on the comics. And lo and behold, as of today of this recording, the PDF is available like four months before the shipping date of the physical book, which is just astronomically quick um i already previewed a little bit through it and it seems like it focuses a bunch on the comic book um arcs so shattered grid um the eltarian war um necessary evil and it looks like part one of darkest hour um, for it so looking through it we got some good enemies from it we got some of um king mondo's brother um we got some stats for serpentera um we got stats for uh ranger z lord zed in his ranger form and a couple other ones for it. it gives you some new background it gives you some new uh 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 perks and powers and some other zords i'm just happy we finally got the thunder zords uh stated so we now know kind of how to use them in game um but yeah another source book right now it's online you can pre-order it um right now for 45 dollars um plus with shipping and everything and that should looks like it's going to arrive the physical book will arrive in march of 2025 um and that's in addition to them announcing another of supposed deck builder as well uh set so lots of good stuff coming from renegade man um I know people love the system. I uh, uh, just as a quick side note to not take too much time from the show, I uh, demoed uh, uh, Renegade's 2023 Gen Con scenario at Miracle Con here in Oklahoma City back in July, and we had a good turnout of people who liked the system. They said it's nothing against D and D, but there's so much D and D, we feel like that it is drowning out the other board games so we had people show up uh and play uh uh the scenario uh battle for the multiverse and we had several power rangers several transformers and several gi joes and all in all it was a good one so i'm hoping myself to run uh part two next year as well as uh some of their scenarios so renegade renegade has a good following man and i'm looking forward to the content that they keep pumping out i mean my ranger group's been running for almost two and a half years now on our story and we're enjoying every minute of it Oh, cool. And uh, we also wanted to highlight an article that came out in September after we recorded our previous episode uh, in which Simon Bennett talked about the making of Cosmic Fury and also what he would have liked to have done if they'd gotten 
one more season in New Zealand. It was a really fascinating article. Like he talked about things like how um, the Cosmic Fury Morpher, that uh, one of the few toys that was produced, it had this gimmick that where it would in- interact or where it react, I should say, to things that happen on the show, specifically the opening theme and the morph. And that gimmick existing meant that the opening music and the morph music and therefore also the morph, I guess, and it's by extension, had to be locked well ahead of them actually shooting anything, which was a really fascinating challenge for the stunt team, sketching this out in Japan and then doing it in New Zealand. And uh, it was worth it, though, because it's good to give kids something to be able to roleplay to. Also, with it bringing Billy back for Cosmic Fury didn't dovetail from Once and Always. In fact, bringing Billy back for Cosmic Fury was the idea before Once and Always was ever an idea. He uh, referred to interviews with David Yost where he talks about the difficult circumstances under which he left. And they wanted to try to give him personally a happier ending than that. And thankfully they were able to do that. But in terms of what they would have done had they got another year, there was a pitch Bible that included, you know, the ideas maybe a ranger who was plus size or a ranger who had a disability. Uh, they were thinking of bringing in JJ, who in their thinking would be non binary. Uh, they also considered the idea of if there were another season with the same cast bringing men into the fold somehow. Uh, Again, that's kind of something that was left on the table at the end of Once and Always, the idea that men is still out there somewhere uh, carrying on her mother's legacy. And the article is really, really fascinating because like outside of what had been his Twitter interactions, there really wasn't uh, a whole lot of him talking at length about the reasoning behind some of these decisions. It, it honestly reminds me of like now that I'm not going to say the show is wrapped up, but now that, well, uh, you know, for, for now, um, but it's making me think of that book. That's also is going to be the behind the scenes book. That's going to be released sometime by uh, a, one of the show staff, like sometime next year. This is kind of those that's behind long, the scenes. Yeah. Type of stuff too. yeah. It was reminding me a lot of that of like, you know, we wanted to do this and then, Oh, we got cut. Like, many episodes so we had to like make sure we at least hit the major points we wanted to um for it which seems like why some of the storytelling may be like disjointed or why some of the arcs like went and wrapped up like the i think the fascinating part from that interview was them talking about um oh his name is escaping me rito um um ranger who lost his arm Avi. Thank you. And that they said they had very, very clear guidelines of you can do this. However, we cannot use this as a sad thing. We need to use it as a, a challenge, as a yeah, to run it by consultants, you know. all that. It's kind of yeah. like how when. When Rocco's Modern Life had that special, they brought Nickelodeon actually asked them to bring Glad in and consult on it because of the inclusion of a trans character and it worked out for the best because yeah it created a story where where ed he grew to be accepting of his daughter yeah and i i love the behind the th- scenes stuff like usually that stuff that's pretty i'm not gonna say exclusive but it's usually relegated to conventions or like one-on-one interviews where they're even tentative to talk about like some of these development stuff. Cause to them too, it's like, it's also just a show. Like I don't remember when we did this, this was 30 years ago versus uh, the, the, like some of the directors or producers or actors where they're very passionate about it. So it's, I, I like hearing these behind the scenes, uh, uh, stories that we're hearing and it's a great article i highly recommend it as well of what the thought process was because um i think also in, in addition to the the um uh black ranger i would also say the interesting uh 
point was Lord Zed was not supposed to be a part of uh, uh, at all of Dino Fury, and then that was kind of a I'm not gonna say a demand, but it was a um, requirement, I guess is the word of Hasbro of well. You're bringing in Lord Zed. Okay, I guess we're bringing in Lord Zed. <laughs> How are we going to do this? And then it just all worked out uh, really well in the end. Very weird for an expanded universe kind of thing, but beggars can't be choosers either. Like, was I happy to see, like, OG evil Lord Zed back? Yes, I was. <laughs> and speaking of Zed, there was another thing that they kind of had to deal with, even if all the whole cast was in theory, cool to come back, Kai Moya had all this other stuff going on, and that's why Ollie was turned evil, because it gave them a reason to have him in the suit with Kai Moya doing voiceover from the U.S. And It worked out in, in the end, right, too. In his reflections on it, uh, Simon Bennett says... Kai was the only person who couldn't commit to the dates because he had various other possibilities happening. So we decided to write Ollie in such a way that, if necessary, he could be masked the entire time and played by a double with Kai voicing from the U.S. The only way we could have him separate from all the other Rangers was really to have him as a villain, as we had done in a single episode of Dino Fury, having the spell put on him again but stay evil. Going on to say that Lord Zed always wanted his own Ranger team, and he finally got his own Ranger to play with for a while. I think it worked well for the story. It also created extra pressure on Amelia because her boyfriend has turned evil at the same time that she's having to step up to be a team leader. And then, of course, you've got the whole, has he been cured or not at the end? Intrigue is a really powerful tool for storytelling. I would say, too, it offered um, a, a component that you didn't mention as well is with Ollie being evil, uh, it offered almost the flip side of a coin for Lord Zed acting as a Zordon mentor, but the other side of the story, essentially, where you don't see just Lord Zed being evil, overlord, galactic, power-hungry uh, villain. You see him definitely as that more toned-down, uh, well, this is why we do it type of deal. Like, it kind of makes sense, and it flowed really well. Side mm -hmm. note, I mean... In my opinion, and I say this whispering very loudly, I think they did a better job than what they did with Jason David Frank and Dino Thunder. Um, for well, yeah, it, because I the, that footage, very, the footage very... didn't really allow him to be separate or anything like that. that because they I still had the to have storytelling him around. Was correct. I also thought, though, the storytelling for Dino Thunder for that was very disjointed. Um, for that versus now, where, again, obviously the footage aside – it flowed much smoother with Ollie. Like, I couldn't have told you that he was separate mm -hmm. from the rest of the cast at that time. They just did it that good of a job. And right. I think they should definitely get kudos for that. Well, because of his scheduling, 99% of the time when he was on set, he was working with the second unit guys. So he said also in an interview with Blue Screen Reveals uh, that, quote, I'm constantly by Lord Zed. And he's huge. When filming, it's actually just me doing the scene because they're speaking Japanese back to me. While saying, while saying my lines, I just stay composed in my moment because although, although I know what they're saying from the script, they're saying it back in Japanese. It was a little wild having to get used to that, but it worked out. It's probably similar to what Adelaide Kane might have went through when she was doing RPM because she spent all her time around suits. Yeah, yeah. It's still a, fa a very fascinating read and very uh, interesting kind of – it makes me think of how Power Rangers, it's still its own it, – to, to use an example um, from it, as everybody has known who's ever listened to this podcast, I like MLP, uh, Friendship is Magic. It's like how Lauren Faust was given – not the reins – but she could work on the show, but they said, all right, here's your limitations. We're not going to give you full reign to utilize the characters as you want because she had her own. This is kind of, all right, Hasbro said, we, here's the limitations. How can we tailor this to our story? And then, of course, budget cuts. <laughs> but, I'm going to pretend that's I understood any of that. Basically, they, they worked with what they were given, and I think based on what they were given at the time, they did a great job with it. Instead of like, oh, we're just going to 
uh, not include Ollie, they made it work and work in such a way that it made a lot of sense both in story and like uh, also highlighting the character as well. But I also okay. think that worked because of ne uh, Netflix. All right, so we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the auction, and we're going to talk about Power Rangers Prime and other things going on with the comics. So uh, back in a bit. My nephew liked the Power Rangers, and I did this on his birthday where he had all his friends around. They were like, Green Ranger? I said, let me show you the real Sentai. I'm going to show you the episode where Green Ranger actually died. And they were sitting there looking. A couple kids start crying like, no, Green Ranger can't be daddy. And the parents were like, what are you showing our kids? The Anime World Order podcast. Not suitable for children because the truth hurts. Visit us online at www.animeworldorder.com. And we are back. So over the past two days, there were live auctions held for uh, nearly everything that Hasbro had kicking around the storage unit or from back in Auckland from the 30 years of production on Power Rangers. In nearly everything they had, everything including old heads from Next Mutation, animatronics, costumes, props, old issues of Disney Adventure. Uh, there's going to be another auction sometime in Q1 of next year where they'll auction off whatever odds and ends they didn't sell this time. But it, the stuff isn't going to be as good. And I was thinking going in that most of the fans who were bidding this, these things, who wanted these things, would get shut out by the broader market for entertainment memorabilia. And that may have been true to an extent, but there was actually a, there were actually a couple of bidders who were clearly fans, who did get some of these things. Uh, there was one bidder whose number kept popping up in the live webcast. Uh, he was bidder, he or she or they, were bidder number 102. And they identified themselves on Twitter with proving themselves by showing their um, their number from the floor auction as well as screenshots of the things they won, proving that they won them. And this person spent tens of thousands of dollars at the auction. Like, I really want to know more about this individual, who they are, where they get that kind of money. But they say that they don't really have a footprint in the online fandom, but that they are fans, that they are a fan, and they wanted to uh, go after some of this stuff. Um I Here's mean, I think we learned, Rito, that uh, 102 is a great example of we discovered something new about the Power Rangers fandom. Some of y'all have deep pockets out there, and yeah. I am very jealous. <laughs> yeah, uh, but here is what they won. It started with Meow Rangers, the group of six cat costumes. Uh, then it continued with the uh, five SWAT helmets from SPD. The SPD green costume, uh, Bridges officer uniform, the Doggy Kruger costume and with the animatronic head, all that. Uh, three Shadow Ranger suits, Omega, uh, Mystic Force Blue, uh, Solaris Knight, two of the Red Shadow Guards from Jungle Fury, Osiris from Jungle Fury, Master Xandred hero costume from Samurai. Curio from Dino Charge, the Drive Defender from Overdrive, six Overdrive helmets, the Blue Jungle Fury Ranger Hero costume, uh, six Booster Claws from Jungle Fury, uh, the Yellow Jungle Fury costume. It's added up. Rhino Ranger Hero costume, Jungle Ma Red Jungle Master Mode, uh, Red Strike Rider armor. And helmet. I get it, Rito. I'm a I'm a peasant. <laughs> I know. Uh, you don't Jayden's, have to rub it in. <laughs> uh, Jaden's red samurai costume. Uh, Jaden's super samurai mega mode costume. Uh, samurai pink. 
samurai pink meg super meg super samurai mega mode. Lots of supers, lots of megas in Saban era. Uh, samurai gold, samurai gold mega mode. Uh, super mega force silver hero costume, and ninja steel gold. Now, to this person's credit, they are willing to at least have conversations with people like Morphin Museum, who made their own bids and won their own sets of items, uh, and talk to people like Greg Aronowitz, who might be interested in things like the doggy animatronic. And they weren't the only whale, this, this individual. Somebody out there bought the Cosmic Blaster from Cosmic Fury for 87500 There was a really big bidding war on that, just straight out of nowhere. And you have to wonder on that item specifically, you know, out of all the items, why that one? Because that blaster is fugly. It is not... If, if there is one true criticism I have of Cosmic Fury, that blaster is needed another draft. That aside, though, it is we also didn't see like... It very the, often. The, yeah, like, there's... It's really there's no toy of it, so I guess maybe that's what the value is um for it. Um I I feel like it didn't have any type of significance, but you know eighty seven thousand uh, dollars there's someone with eighty seven thousand dollar more reasons than myself for it, apparently. Yeah. But yeah, that was a shocker. The other uh, top items included, as we expected, the Astro Mega ship, which went for forty seven five. The oh, wait, 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 before you go further, uh, Rito, um, I actually have uh, the final list of, like, the I'm top at 10 list. items. I'm oh, you are? Okay. So, besides the Cosmic Blaster, the other top items included, as we expected, since it was up there in early bidding, the Astro Omega Ship, the Transforming Astro Omega Ship uh, model prop goes for... 47.5. This is all before buyer's premiums, I believe. So just tack another 25% on onto each of these. Uh, a Green Ranger costume purported to be from Mighty Morphin, though fans identified parts that were from newer productions, like uh, like Dimension in Danger. Uh, that went for 30. The Thunder Megazord helmet, just the helmet, went for 27.5. The that was RPM. Weird. I, yeah, I, I know I, that one out of everything, and I have it in my notes right here, Rito, of things that surprised me. Obviously, the Cosmic Fury Blaster, the Thunder Megazord head just seemed out of left field. Like, you know, I understand the Green Ranger costume, but the head, <laughs> okay, uh, it's like the meme of okay, I guess. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry, I that one threw me for a loop. Yeah, the RPM jackets went for twenty seven five. Uh a yellow ranger costume purported to be from MPR, including helmet, went for twenty three seven fifty. A dragon dagger for once and always went for twenty three twenty three thousand seven fifty dollars. A pink ranger costume from MPR went for twenty two five. Goldar Maximus of all things went for twenty one two fifty. Hobby, that one but, was weird too. I know, like, yeah. like he didn't wasn't. I'm not gonna say he wasn't prominent on uh, the reunion special, but it's also a weird it was, costume. Yeah. It is. It is. Uh, Cosmic Fury Black went for twenty. Uh, Once and always Red Ranger went for twenty. The uh, Doggy Kruger costume we referred to earlier went for eighteen seven seven fifty. Master Zed went for eighteen seven fifty. Six. This is super random. Uh, six Cosmic Fury Morpher props went for seventeen five. The uh, movie White Ranger. Yeah, costume I'm not. I'm not surprised on sixteen because... fifty. Well, I mean, I think like yeah, they're no, they're they're you know the toy of the Morpher wasn't that good, but it wasn't so bad that I'm willing to pay seventeen thousand for those props. That's that's valid. There is an option on the website. If you purchase uh, a particular item, you can register your ownership on the Heritage website and receive anonymous offers through 
through the website or added it to your uh, your collection on that website. Otherwise, I don't think we're going to find out who won any of these things beyond just describing them as them having been a live bidder or an internet bid or whatever. Interestingly, you know, there was a lot of talk about uh, Cosmic Fury Red. Uh, that bidding was up through like early internet bids to 15,000. And it was the only item that I can recall that did not get any additional bids in the moment. All of these were bid up at least once or twice uh, over the course of the bidding. And in terms of things that were obtained by the actual actors, the only people who, the only person we can say for sure got something that they themselves wore was Jason Font, who uh, scored a Time Force red suit that he personally had worn for marketing things, that sort of thing. He said on Instagram that he's probably going to hang it in his office or something, because he has a suit that he commissioned from like a cosplayer or something that he would wear himself, you know, for photo ops or whatever. But he said that it's really nice to have. Uh, I think he's maybe one of the few working actors who is Power Rangers alum who's probably able to afford this kind of stuff. And it seems like he's one of the relevant ones like who's not ashamed, I guess, of being right. on yeah. Power Rangers. Um he seems very proud like to be a part like it does mean something to him, just like um um Danny. It does mean that he was Lost Galaxy Red. It's in his uh office as a lawyer, like for it, it's it surprising. I'm I'm happy they were able to get that. Yeah, you know, and John Tui probably would have been in us bidding bidding too if he weren't busy right now. You know, that's my my consolation. I'm going to live with is I may be a peasant and unable to bid for some of these items, meaning all of the items, but many of the actors could not either. So you know, we're all poor together. <laughs> um, yeah, there's. It, it, you mentioned the most expensive. Did you see the list for the least expensive uh, yes, items? I, I, sold? You read my mind. I was just flipping it around. A group of henchmen spears went for eight seventy five. Uh, Red Ranger cycle front fairing from Dino Fury that went for nine thirty seven fifty. I don't think the buyer realized how big that thing actually is. The Caleb, the, the Monty's uh, square body costume from uh, Seen Ninja Seal. That went for a thousand bucks. The uh, group of uh, paper goods from Power Rangers, everything from just basically whatever Saban had high in the closet, like random comics, that Halloween stuff, that sort of thing, went for nearly twelve hundred bucks. A pair of Moza Razor Blasters and Cosmic Fury went for thirteen seventy five. Uh, really, it's really random stuff that's that's down the bottom of this list. Like a Miracles yeah. costume and a Camille costume. The uh, chillers. Yeah, things that. The hoverboard from Ninja Steel. Yeah. And Squillia went for just 1500 Which is a bit surprising. Uh, I don't think that. Honestly, yeah. I'm not surprised on that one, but that's me. Eh. I guess, you know, to each their own. Yeah. Uh, but Bitter 102 is really, like, they seem to really first establish that they are who they say they are, with, like, photographic evidence, that sort of thing. Uh, but they were tweet they were kind of live-tweeting for a bit of it, like, that they were going for the Samurai Gold costume, or that they're releasing to cos they actually end up did, we just recited it, a full list of things they won, along with photos, as long as I- once everything arrives, and also offering to sell certain things to cosplayers as requested. You know, so they seem to be a good person. Um, yeah. You know, I don't really know who they are. But good on them. I I will say that I think a total I saw from day one and day two, I think it reached $3 million. And one it did, two, yeah, over $3 million. Yeah, and 102 did confirm what you said earlier, Rito, that they are going to have a second auction, but it's not going to be this. It may be some odds and ends items, right, more exactly. like weapons or props um, that they missed out on. So not suits, more like, oh, we missed 
Angel Grove World Peace Flyer, things like that. That's what people should expect. Yeah, uh, there, maybe there are, yeah. power coins, you know. And like I said, there are fans who did like tweet about winning certain things, and good for them. Uh, my friend Eric over at Ranger Command Power Hour won a uh, lot of three B sex hero weapons. Uh, I don't know offhand how much he, he paid for those, but good for him. One of the uh, uh, Kazakiri Morpher lots did go to Morphin Museum, and uh, they figured out um, where the orbs went, and they also found who got into Steel Gold, which they were looking for. Uh, oh boy, I'm just scrolling through all the tweets about the auction, but it's good to see that this stuff ended up in good homes. Yeah, and I so, know um, the one I was trying to figure out, I believe it was Morphin Museum. They were trying to get, like, their Holy Grail, but they were unable to get it, but they didn't state what it was. Um, so I am curious on that. I know a friend of mine personally. He won the uh, Super Samurai Shogun Red Mode um, from the show, but he outright said that's not what he initially bid for. He wanted Daishi. But that became a bidding war, and he, it, he said he backed out at that point because he was he knew he was not going to win. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. it, 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 he said, "quote It snowballed R- real fast, real fast." Uh, Rito, uh, I have a couple questions for you. Um, the first yeah. one is, do you believe there were some people there just bidding to up the price? No, really, I feel like there was, but if you it bid, may not be one. You person. risk winning. That's also true, but you also – are you legally bound to it? That's a good question. I wouldn't want to find out the answer. Sure. Um, if Here's my second question for you with the, the auction. If you had all the money that you wanted to in the world, what would have been one – and I'll even say two items you wish you could have bid on? Hmm. Um. That's a tough one. Um, the mega ship, probably. I mean, that's that's an easy answer. Um, second item, probably Doggy Kruger. Really? Yeah. Though I don't know because I want something that I would want something you know would hold up and it's clear that that animatronic has city miles on it um it does and i agree yeah. with you. um i'm surprised it existed still that that i was really really shocked of seeing and learning about yesterday of oh they actually have doggy kruger <laughs> um yeah yeah some of this stuff did hold up pretty well for over the years but i i guess like thinking like practically something that isn't foam and maybe even isn't fabric would probably be the most durable as a keepsake or, or yeah. something like that. Like, you know, like something like Rick, for example. Yeah. Or yeah, one that's of the Megazord helmets. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, some of these things did hold up remarkably well. Like, like Necroli held up really well. Um, but you look through some of the pictures and it's clear time has not been as kind to all of these correct um mine for me that was based what was in the auction because you know i would be the generic person of i want the dragon dagger but then since it's not the original like jdf has oh well i don't need the once and always I do say if I had to bid on two items, I mean, the Astro Mega Ship, I think, is everybody's kind of one of like, that's kind of the big single item for it. I would have wanted one of the three Z staffs. I think that one, it went for, I think they went five, six thousand on there. I wonder I, if, if they had the one that was repaired with duct tape, how much would that have sold for? Oh, man, that, you know, that that one's a deep cut because you think that would easily hit over five figures because it is the <laughs> original one um, from you, it. You know which Let's episode it was from, it. too. Yeah, um, I think for the memes alone, 
it would have gotten a big price. Um, but I would have wanted a Z staff. Um, I also would have wanted um, probably the original morphers that were up for bid from the original series for it. Um, that, is, there anything know, that, 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 is there anything that surprised right. you that wasn't in the auction? Yes, actually, I'm very happy you asked that question because I have two items I am extremely surprised were not in the auction. And I searched through the pages for it, and I either expect them to be in the next auction or not at all. I actually, Well, I have three. I'll put it that way. One of them is a common sense one with it, but the battle-damaged Quantum Ranger or Lost Galaxy Red Ranger helmets that were broken. I'm surprised they were not part of the auction if they still even exist from when they were damaged, like against Trakina and all, uh, and uh, uh, Rancic. Um, Quantum so Ranger, those are you one... don't mean Red Time Force Ranger? Yeah, Red Time Force and um, Lost Galaxy Red, both of their helmets that were damaged. Also, and the final the Beast battles. Morphers while we're at it. I don't remember the Beast Morphers one, but add, add that to a lot. Um, I'm surprised there was no battle damage. Excuse me, battle damaged items. Um, the second one I had, and I'll let don't let me forget. I just remembered one, but we'll circle back around. The second one was Astronomer's Wrath Staff. I am surprised that was not in the auction. Um, uh, as well. Um, I was also, you know, one you would think would have been in the auction, the Zeo Crystal. I'm surprised you know, the Zeo yeah. Crystal was not part of the auction. <laughs> I was um, surprised that there wasn't more stuff from the sister shows. Uh, like you would I think agree. that, given, like given the way that all these materials have changed hands over the years, uh, that there would still somehow be something from like VR Troopers kicking around or. Mystic Knights. I agree. Um, and I think... Um, yeah. I almost suspect those are going to be the items in the next auction. Um, those it's are possible. weapons. It's also those possible are... that everything Mystic Knights was, you know, uh, sold off in Ireland. You know, we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the Battle Damage Helmets, the Wrath Staff, the Zeo Crystal. There was two more that actually just came to me that I was also very surprised and one I do not expect in the next auction, um, Dark Spectre slash Malagor. If it exists still, I am very surprised that it is not uh was not part of the auction. I well, would also yeah. say to that um Battleizers. We very know that a lot of yeah, we know that a lot of things were thrown in the wood chipper around SPD. Uh and probably after SPD as well. So that is also correct. I know the original Wrath Staff does exist because uh, Melody Perkins used pictures with it. Her and um, Hillary Shepard, when they did like the Diva Talks Astronomy Tag Team duo, that was the original. So it does exist somewhere. It's, it. This um, stuff may already be in like private collections or something. Correct, and I do yeah. keep that in mind of that one. Um, the Zeo Crystal one, to me, that would be the biggest shocker because that's kind of like, what happened to it? Maybe it went in the wood chipper. Um, I mean, maybe Hunter, it was thrown in a portal. It might have been um, it was split it, up and thrown it, in a portal, and we all have to go in personal journeys of self discovery, you know, with our ancestors or something. So that's how we uh, revive the franchise. It's been in front of us this entire time, Rito. Um, and uh, Melissa Flores just tweeted, whoever got my BB Goldar in the Heritage Auction, please take good care of him. He sat in my office for well over a year while I tried to get his mouth fixed and never managed it. Be kind to my growly boy. Oh, see, that, I mean, I have to say it, Rito, um, and I know it will be disagreements with it. Um, obligatory, this was not a normal auction because there's too many people pointing that out, regardless. Um, but yeah, those were the items that I was genuinely surprised that they did not make it to the auction, and maybe they're in the next one. Um, we already kind of mentioned, like, the the items that threw us off that went for large amounts, like the Thunder Megazord head, the Cosmic Fury Blaster. And also, as a side note, I understand, too, there's going to be stuff that doesn't exist. 
Um, I fully expected not to see the true Rito Revolto like costume because that thing. Oh, broke that's down. very gone. Yeah, that's yeah, why it's he wasn't very gone. in uh, Countdown to Destruction. And uh, the uh, Twitter user Mary thought. actually has a thread going of who is willing to say you know what they won, um, which is really, really heartwarming. Well, it's also to the. Um, uh, Rito Revolta was one of those. I saw someone that said why if Goldor was there, they didn't realize that. Yeah, he yeah. decomposed a long time ago, unrelated to being a he's, skeleton. Yeah, he's not even a pile of bones. The bones are gone. Yeah, yeah. Some people didn't realize like some of this stuff like decomposed hardcore. The other one was Dark Honda. Like I'm not surprised. Like that costume was already very, very delicate as it was. Um, I'm not surprised there's no Dark Honda, but they live on in art. They live on in uh, other franchises. Um, but yeah, that was the things I was surprised at. Um, not to sound mean, I'm not surprised Hunter didn't get her suit. Um, when well, you put it out there or when Power Morphicon promotes it, kind of not surprised people bid just for that reason, just so they didn't get it. There's there's bad people out there, don't get me wrong, but I'm not surprised she did not win it. Um, I will be up well, front, too. I, I, th- I, I don't think she never there. told people not to bid, though. None of the people who Power Morphicon was telling people not to bid in their stuff ever told people not to bid. And it was a whole thing. It's really embarrassing and a bad look for Power Morphicon. Uh, whatever. It's all in the past now. That, too. Um, I will say, too, I'm not... Um... Uh, we joked about it prior. We just never got around to it. Having bingo cards of what would sell, what wouldn't. I wouldn't have bingoed. There's two. There were so many unknown factors going into it. I may have been like the Everything oh the highest sell. item. Correct. I would have been like uh oh the dragon dagger would have been the highest bid item. No, turns out that uh the cosmic blaster would not have bingo. <laughs> and uh, um, the same guy won Olympia Super Demon Demon form. Spellbinder from Dino Charge, Wolfgang from Dino Fury, and Robo Snizzard and Robo Minotaur from Once and Always. I again, I, I'm not doing math, but that's a lot of that's a lot of money. And that's not even including the guarantees and stuff. That 25 or yeah. what was it? 20 percent extra add-on. 25, yeah, yeah. Like, yikes. Um, I would be curious. It was something I wanted to do for this live stream or live stream um, podcast recording, Rito, but I never, since the auction was still going today, there was no way to do it. I am curious what the breakdown of each thing is going to be. If you isolated each item for its own season or for what it was, what were kind of the most popular ones? Like, I know Mighty Morphin sold the most. Um, I guess where I'm going with that is I've I'm seen not breakdowns on the in items. terms of net like revenue, yeah. but that doesn't really tell you a whole lot. I'll, I'll put it this way: I'm I'm not surprised that the fan favorite seasons had stuff that went for large amounts of money, especially for individual items. Except for Cosmic Fury, that one actually surprised me a whole lot. I also keep in mind like. Not every season had a lot of items that were up for grabs, such as Lightspeed Rescue did not have a lot of items. Um, Lost Galaxy had one, I think, what, one Quasar Saber. There was not a lot, so I keep that in mind as well. It's not a true judgment of it, but I would be curious of each individual season, like what the average price of each item was, especially if you excluded the big, like Cosmic Fury. If we took the blaster out, what is the actual selling point for each one for it because when you look at it honestly outside of the big ticket items that everybody would want for it prices were kind of reasonable on stuff especially the monsters the monsters i think everybody was surprised at as well and you know some of those people are gonna want to wear those at cons like despite us knowing like that that needs to be in a museum they're gonna wear them <laughs> at least once <laughs> let's be whoever honest. <laughs> wears any of this stuff isn't i don't know i mean they're not meant to be worn they're psychopaths. Even if they were worn. The ranger suits are. <laughs> right, but I mean, well, I mean, like, if you're buying something that's, like, screen used, and you wear that to a convention, if anything happens to it, you know, congratulations. Correct. Never doubt humanity being stupid, though. <laughs> so, moving on, when comics do is Power Just Prime number one is out. This is the new Power Just comic line. It's totally new storyline, all that. It 
is a remix of the things that we think we know about the Power Rangers universe with a new new story, new characters, all of it. Uh, in Power Rangers It's Prime, almost like yeah. the an ultimate it's like Marvel's ultimate universe. Like it's almost their version of taking the lore and the history and then kind of like rebooting it. In the world of Prime, Earth has been colonized by the Eltarians as kind of a a police state. And Lauren, Jaden's sister, who does in this story have the power to morph all that, gets flung into this world and finds herself kind of in the care of this uh, teenager and kind of protected from the Earth Security Task Force, which again are these jackboots who, you know, roam the streets of Angel Grove and all that. The big twist of this first issue is that the troopers referred to turn out to be the VR troopers. And uh, that is a very curve that was a curveball development and i don't think anybody I, really expect agreed. to see the vr troopers in one of these but, well, i mean let's be honest we can outright say if anybody says they were expecting it you're a liar <laughs> and the comic <laughs> ends. you are a blatant liar <laughs> yeah and the comic ends spoilers with rita repulsa her dumpster coming down to earth like a meteor and her popping out of it after all these years I'm free and uh, we will see what happens in issue 2 there actually was a uh, preview for issue 2 that came out from Boom Um, the uh, first look synopsis says the new Morph Novel era continues in the second action packed issue of Power Rangers Prime Conflicts merge around a fugitive ranger, drawing another iconic team, and setting up a world colliding crossover that fans have been theorizing about for years. Meanwhile, a fan favorite villain has uncovered the remnants of a samuraiser, and the latent morphin energy could unleash a power unlike anything the universe has ever seen. Now, if you read the first issue, then you can probably imagine who that, that fugitive ranger is. Crossover. Fa- fan favorite villain. So. I really like where this is going. The first issue is already sold out big time everywhere. So if you want it, you're going to have to either go online or wait for your comic book shop to stock the second printing. Or you can get it digitally. You know, do whatever. Yeah. Uh, I I like where they're going with it. Um, I do like that it's its own thing, not necessarily... Uh, uh, just another rehash or something. It really tries to branch out and be its own type of uh, uh, story. And I do like that Lauren is getting attention again because she was a very popular character in the initial like comics, and then they had to move away from Lauren uh, for it. So it's good to see Lauren back. Yeah, yeah, and I really like you know it's a clean slate. And they could basically do whatever, and also again creates room for you know surprises like the VR troopers. It'll be interesting to see how how Ryan and the rest are, are characterized in this new run and you know whether they are in the end friend or foe. All I ask if they're gonna do VR troopers, all right boys, this is your opportunity. Make the Mystic Knights canon, make them ancient rangers. Uh, you have the ability to do so guys. <laughs> Don't let us down. <laughs> And uh, also, for, I guess, related announcement, Free Comic Book Day, the uh, free comic book for Power Rangers is a VR Troopers comic. And that is really all we know. There's no artwork yet or anything, but Free Comic Book Day is May 3rd of next year. And Well, and uh, we do know, too, that uh, uh, we have the official title of it. We right. do know that. Well, no, uh, do we have the title? Uh all we have is yeah, synopsis, yeah. It, which is after 30 years, the VR troopers are back and better than ever. After making her long way to return the page of Power Rangers Prime, this issue will give fans a sneak peek at a new era of virtual, virtual reality powered action alongside a special flipbook calling back to the original 1995 comics. Yeah, the the official title for it. We don't have the subtitle, but it's the VR troopers versus the Power Rangers. Okie dokie. We do have that um from it but that's about it um side note speaking of comics too um another person revealed um 
I can never say his last name, so I apologize to this individual. But the 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 writer for the Phantom Ranger comic, yeah, I Frank, saw that. Uh, Gogol, yeah, he he got the Phantom Ranger comic. Yeah, yeah, good for him. I guess that that's not like, exactly he, a cast he member loved the Phantom Ranger, in, but it's close enough. Yeah, and now he could finally tell us: Is Billy really uh, uh, the Phantom Ranger, or was he not? <laughs> No, uh, that's a, that's a deep joke. But uh, I just saw that um, passing through of the people who do want to make themselves known like they did win this stuff, and he'll take care of it. So that that's I'm glad the Phantom Ranger went to a good home. <laughs> and uh, also, across the Morgan Grid came out recently. Have you had a chance to read it? I have not. It's on a pile of comics alongside. Feral, Godzilla vs. Power Rangers Part 2, uh, what, what else do I have? So My Little Pony, like, things I need to just sit down and read. It's been a busy time for myself. Did you know we had 6 a.m. tornadoes the past two weeks? Okay. Type of busy. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're safe. Yeah. But it's a very charming collection of stories uh, told by, again, these actors, David Yost, Steve Cardenas, Nakia Baris, Walter Jones, and Megan Camarena, that look at either what their characters did after, you know, moving on from Rangerdom, maybe filling in some gaps in their own stories. Uh, The Rocky story, which is co-written with Matt Groom, is kind of a side story about Rocky's younger sister, who discovers that he's a ranger and steals his morpher and decides to go do try to do ranger things. Uh, and the Chloe story, which is written by Megan Camarena, is just a fun little side story with her and Vesper making candy burritos. What What did you think of it? Did you like it? Oh yeah, it's it's a bunch of fun. Cool. Yeah, I'll have to maybe bump that up my uh uh reading list. Yeah, your comic shop might be out of it. I know mine was, but you can just get it. Oh, online. I own it. I have it. Okay. Yeah. 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 But definitely give it a read. So, anyway, other than that, I think we are. Uh, I I think that's pretty much all we had to talk about. Uh, anything else you got, plug? No, guys. Um, as, as Rito usually says, you can find me on Twitter, but I'm slowly moving away from Twitter. Um, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, to definitely. Blue Sky. Um, you can find me I, on Blue I, Sky. You can start. You can still find us on the hell site but i don't know about you know going forward i might have to start re-recording our outro i don't know i haven't really thought about that yet yeah sorry to add to uh, more stuff to that rito but yeah um i'm gonna be focused on blue sky but i am going to kind of have two accounts where one's yeah. just for football and then one's for like comic cons and just generic stuff because the fandoms don't cross over nearly as much as I would want, but beggars can't be choosers as well. So, uh, but yeah, you'll be able to find me on Blue Sky. Other than that, Rito, it's kind of been slow. Uh, uh, football season's wrapping up. Um, convention season's wrapping up for the year. Um, you, you know, I do have one extra thing, um, and you'll start seeing it here soon, is um, it looks like they're trying to get more of the... Uh, uh, ranger actors that are not your usual suspects like mighty morphin and stuff to do convention appearances and so far if i can find it very briefly before we wrap up uh uh ninja steel pink and a couple others have signed on to uh uh make tours around the united states so i think you know people are excited for some of those later seasons um we'll be thrilled to see yeah um the first client is uh, uh, Ninja Steel Pink, so hopefully they'll be making the rounds and stuff as well, and we'll be able to see them at conventions and hear their stories and everything as well. That's interesting. We'll keep an eye out. You know, you can find us wherever you find us, and we will uh, see you next time on RangerCast. Have a good one, everybody. Stay safe and happy holidays. If you like what you just heard, find us at RangerCast.net or look us up in your favorite podcast app. Reach out to us on Twitter or leave a voicemail on our website. The opening theme is by Daniel Park. The ending theme is by me. RangerCast is distributed under Creative Commons license. A tribute and share alike.